What does the future of cybersecurity look like? This is the exact question we'll be answering in today's video with a special guest, Unix guy, who'll be sharing some of his insights on the cybersecurity job market, what the best area is to go into in cybersecurity right now, and essentially how to future-proof yourself for your cybersecurity career. All right, thanks so much, Unix guy, for joining us. So what area in cybersecurity do you think is best to go into right now to get hired? So the best area to get in cybersecurity in 2025 is probably all of them. I think there is a demand for literally every single area. Now, some areas have more demand than others. I think I'll call it probably three areas that I see with the most demands is we've got on the blue team side, probably anything to do with a SOC. So like SOC analyst, cyber analyst, uh, I do believe we need a lot of teams to just detect and respond to incidents. So anything in and around the SOC is highly in demand. However, just being a technical person, in my opinion, is no longer enough. That the technical genius who is so disconnected from the business, I think those days are long gone. Now we need people to be more well-rounded. So I strongly believe that, you know, being more of a generalist, so having blue teaming skills, having GRC skills, and even basic, basic penetration testing. So I think pen testing on its own, if someone wants to specialize in pen testing, it's probably not the highest growth area. There is still demand, but it, but in terms of you know maximizing your chances of getting hired in 2025, be more of a generalist. Focus on blue teaming skills, being a SOC analyst, and GRC skills combined. Yeah, that's really interesting advice because I think when I was starting out, it was go really in depth into one specific area in cybersecurity. Even though I was also personally interested in being a generalist. So look to be fair, I think it's a good idea once you land that first job to really pick something you're interested in could be anything and go as deep as you can however on the job you are expected to know more than one thing you, you're not supposed to be um, a one-trick pony but yeah good point most people end up doing exactly what you said they get hired into one role then they go deep in one or two areas okay so what was your cybersecurity career path and can you share some advice for beginners who want to get to where you are yeah look really good question i think my career path just keeping in mind that it was a long time ago so when i started out we did not have dedicated cybersecurity roles instead you usually had to be a network engineer so you configure routers and switches and part of the job was sort of security tasks like basic firewalling, basic access control lists. That was one pathway. The other pathway which I went through was the system admin, system engineer uh, pathway. So I used to work in Unix, hence the name Unix guy. Um, so worked with Sun, a company called uh, Sun Microsystems. Um, they had a Unix operating system called Solaris. So I was a Unix and security engineer. And from there, I had a chance to do things like identity and access management through um, what, what you guys know now as Open LDAP. And we did patch management. We even used to install like firewalling was um, a Sun server with a software from a new company called Checkpoint, which is a huge company now. It just was just a basic software. That was my starting point. And fast forward to today, I work in consulting where it could be called GRC because I don't write code or I'm not active on the tool, but I get really involved in lots of projects, but mainly strategy, risk management, planning, road mapping, and all of that stuff. I don't recommend anyone to follow my footpath because uh, A, you don't need to, and B, we live in a much, much better time now. So my recommendation as always is plenty of videos on my channel and your channel, Sandra, that can really help someone who is starting out. I always recommend focusing on training courses with hands-on practical knowledge. I'm really not a fan of the multiple choice stuff that people seem to be infatuated with. So yeah, if I was to start out now, I'll, as I said, I think in the previous question, I'll go deep in blue teaming, I'll get GRC training and just move on. And yeah, I'll try to be more well-rounded and that would be my focus. I wouldn't focus on first being a network engineer or a system engineer. If you want to do that, it's still valid. However, it's not a must. In the past, it used to be a must. Nowadays, you can really start as a cybersecurity professional and have a very long career. And so just to ask you, Sandra, I think you started as a cybersecurity professional. You didn't work in IT prior to that, correct? No, I didn't. So I was actually in software engineering before I got into cybersecurity. So very different area. So you were a student of software engineering. I feel 
someone could think, oh, Sandra was a software engineer, therefore I must be a software engineer before cybersecurity. There is hundreds, if not thousands of individuals literally every single year who move to cybersecurity with no prior tech background. This is the way to do it. You absolutely don't need to, to do other stuff, in my opinion. Right, exactly. I think there are so many different areas into cyber. Like one of my old red team mentors, she was in psychology. And then eventually she took a class on red teaming and then she kind of just came into the field and she was really good at it. So you can really come from anywhere. 100%. And I see it time and time again. Actually, I, I literally get those success stories from people, you know, who watch the videos, they get their first cybersecurity job. Mm -hmm. None of them had technical background before. Um, uh, if, you're, if you're someone who's willing to do the work, you're willing to put your head down, study and go through that uncomfortable phase of learning a new field, feeling a bit intimidated and, you know, just powering through, let the months pass and focus on those hands-on practical skills. There is no reason why you can't enter this field. 100% agree. Okay, so one last question for you. If you have one resource that you could recommend for someone just starting out in cybersecurity, what would it be? Yeah, look, <laughs> really hard question. I think it's a loaded question. Uh, I think the problem with that is someone would say, if you just had to do to choose one course, one, you know, one training to win them all, what's going to be the problem with that? Let's say I pick a course. It comes then with the expectation that I will do this one course. Therefore, I am entitled to land a six figure high paying job that I can do from my bedroom with zero experience. I think there is no one course that can guarantee that remote six figure job right away, you know, just by doing one basic course. Uh, I think if I was to pick one course, I'd say it depends on which stage you're at. If you're someone who like zero technical background, you can just turn the computer on and off. You haven't worked in tech. I think the Google Cyber Cert can be a good broad introduction. I do know individuals who managed to land the job just with the Google Cyber Cert. However, they are the exception, not the norm. Usually we need to do more of a hands-on um, cybersecurity practical training to build that skill set. So when it comes to um, GRC, I do recommend my own GRC mastery because I think it's a really brief and concise course that will give you everything you need for GRC then I would personally move on to something from the blue teaming world. And with that, there is so much choice out there. And fortunately or unfortunately, all the providers, in my opinion, are really good. We've got to mention them in no particular order. We've got Hack the Box, Try Hack Me, Let's Defend. Um, what else is out there? Cyber Defenders, Blue Team, Level 1, Level 2. I'm sure there are others, but those are the ones I can think of. And Sandra, you can, you probably also know more resources. I would pick one of those platforms and I would really go all the way with it. Uh, a common mistake that I see is people pick a platform. Let's say they pick Let's Defend or Hack the Box and they do only the free basic courses and the capture the flag challenges and they never do the intermediate and advanced stuff. I think the real value is comes from the certification path. It comes from those challenging intermediate and advanced courses. That's what I would personally do. Um, I think with that comes, I think, a couple of questions. All right, so how long is it going to take me? It's going to take as long as it's going to take. Some people learn fast, some people slow. I'm personally a really slow learner, so I take longer than most people to learn things. Some people are fast, they learn faster. Some people, they've got kids, they've got commitments. Other people, you know, they have nothing else to do but this. So, you know, you, you get out of it what you put in. I think it's, we're no longer hearing the people who are like, oh, you just get your security plus and uh, you'll get a job. Because sometimes I still get questions about that. Hey, I have my security plus and I've applied to jobs, but I haven't heard anything back. And I'm just like, well, have you done anything else on top of the security plus? Because that tends to be the biggest issue that I see. Really solid point. In fact, you reminded me um, in my Discord server, I still remember it. A guy comes in really angry on Discord and he tells me he's a high school teacher and he uh, did the Google Cyber Security Cert and the way he was typing in Discord, he was demanding to speak with me personally because he did the Google Cyber Cert and didn't land the job right away. Which, <laughs> it, this, one, this one in particular really pissed me off because he was rude. A, he was really rude and entitled, but B, to be a high school teacher, at least in Australia, you need to have a four years degree and you need to have a master's degree. So this is a person who probably had like 
over $100,000 of student debt just to become a high school teacher. But when it comes to cybersecurity, he wants to pay 50 bucks, spend three months studying and be entitled to this high paying uh, cybersecurity job that he is absolutely entitled to because he just did one basic training course. This stuff sometimes pisses me off uh, because it really is the wrong mindset. You are entering a new field. You're supposed to put in time and effort to learn and build your skills. And at the end of it, it is actually possible to land a really high paying job um, without needing to do expensive degrees and without needing to spend, I don't know, 10 years studying for it. Yeah. Okay. These kinds of comments I also get pretty often. I think people would need to level set their expectations going into cyber because it's not something where you can just get rich quick. There, there's no magic bullet where you can just take one course and then a month later you have a six figure job. It's just not going to happen most of the time. Yeah, I actually know people who were doing digital marketing and other stuff and they just applied to cybersecurity job and they happened to land the job. It definitely happens. There is definitely demand, but expecting it to be easy is really setting yourself up for failure. Um, respect the field. It's All I'm saying is it's possible. All that Sandra is saying, it's possible if you're willing to put in the time and effort. At the end of it, there is a really high paying career that it's in demand that's actually interesting and dynamic in my opinion so it's it's really out there but expecting it to be easy is just setting yourself up for failure all right thank you so much unix guy for joining me on this call do you have any final takeaways for the audience no not at all just make sure you um follow and subscribe to sandra and to myself and yeah i'll see you in the next video all right perfect and i'll have unix guys contact and youtube channels all channels linked in my description below Okay, so based on all the topics that we just covered, personally, I think that the GRC job market is really going to be growing in the next few years, especially with the growth of all these new startups, Gen AI tools, and the overall accessibility of technology across the board, not only in the US, but also internationally. So more companies are going to be able to take advantage of building their own products. And this also means there will be more companies who will also then need to go through audits, go through different regulatory requirements, get GDPR compliant, get ISO compliant. So you can kind of see the cycle of GRC where new companies are forming, new companies need to get audited because their customers are going to eventually require them to get audited, which will then also lead to more hiring in the GRC space. And I know GRC isn't one of those areas that is as popular and as talked about compared to the red team and the blue team. But personally, I think everyone can benefit from learning GRC. It's foundational. It, it covers a gamut for cybersecurity foundations, especially if you're a beginner. These could very well be concepts that could come up in your next cybersecurity interview, in your first job in cybersecurity. So definitely don't sleep on GRC skills and learning this for the future of cybersecurity. Because GRC is very much one of the top skills that is going to be in the future of Gen AI and the future of technology as a whole. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully this video was helpful. Thank you again to Unix Guy for joining me for this. Really appreciate his insights and his experience. If you want to check out Unix Guy's channel as well as his GRC mastery course, feel free to check out the links in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe as it really does help out the channel. Also, don't forget to stay connected on LinkedIn, Discord, Instagram. I post videos weekly and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.